So, Faded 4, one of the most dangerous and most, <laughs> the most craziest and fan favorite group of the uh, Monster Hunter community. I, I gotta say, they have to be on your Monster Hunter favorites list, because if you're not, you are unbelievably behind on the times here. But today we're going to see how if all four of these guys pretty much handle the How to Train Your Dragon universe. Now, we're going to be ranking them on difficulty at the end of the video here. And, well, maybe throughout the video too, you know, we got to give my full-blown opinion about this situation here. So, we're going to start off from, you know, some of these guys will be effective in the verse here. And someone would just be like, okay, they're there. They can cause catastrophe. But it's really not much of a big deal deal here so let's start off with the homie glavinus all right so let's talk about um a little bit of glavinus's lore here he actually goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with rathalos and rathian especially rathian because well uh, you know he and rathian got some uh got some beef apparently like this is absolutely um you know j just a measurable amount of beef here but the thing is, he's able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Elder Dragon level monsters here. Glavinus is pretty capable of taking on things like Ebony Odogarin, which is absolutely ridiculous. Considering that Ebony Odogarin is the deviant version, he would be able to fight off Elder Dragons and being able to actually contend with the likes of Devil Joe, despite what game mechanics actually say here. Uh, yeah, um, just really no ifs, ands, or buts about it here. So Glavinus is absolutely just you know, a absolute beast of a monster to be around here. I mean, this guy can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tigrex, conquer the rot most of the Rotten Vale, pretty much is actually one of the few Apex Predators of the Rotten Vale, competing with other Apex Predators like, again, Ebony Odegarin and Tigrex, for crying out loud here. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, sorry about that. And yeah, honestly... What if he showed up in the verse here? Now, honestly, these guys would have no choice but to leave him alone, all right? Once they see this dude can obliterate a mountain with a single tail swipe, turn that sucker into dust. Yeah, um, your best option is to leave Hellblade or any type of Glavinus alone here. I do see him being in an environment where he hunts uh, Boulder-class dragons only. Now, you might say, Legendary, why um Boulder-class dragons? Well, because, well, y you know, it's a more magma-rich dragon. These guys eat boulders and rocks here, so you can see them hunting the likes of Eruptodons, Quakens. I think Quakens are definitely um desirable prey here. And, uh, you know, just other boulder-class dragons, Gronkles. Uh, I'll even throw in a Rumblehorn. Yeah, he can definitely eat down, mow down just like any dragon in the verse. Even some of the higher-up dragons, like Bewilderbeasts, Forever Wings, etc., etc. So, you guys get it, right? He's really just someone you just can't mess with as a whole here. Now, I do see, you know, they go into this, like, open forest-type continent or whatever, and they discover Glavinus is the top of the food chain hunting these kind of dragons. They can't stop him, and they can't prevent it. They'll try. Yeah, they'll, they'll try, but it's gonna either end up getting their dragons injured or... Or someone's going to get sliced in half here. And Hiccup's definitely going to see it as, yeah, we can't we can't really mess with this guy at all. There's really nothing. Ah, shoot my nose. There's really nothing. Um, Yeah, there's nothing they can do. Toothless can't damage him. And Glavinus can sure as well tag him as well. They might say, oh, Toothless is faster than um Lightning. So, you know, Glavinus can't really touch him. Okay, one, you, you'd be downplaying Monster Hunter here. And two, you be highballing how to train your dragon. They really don't have anything close to the speed of light. The best thing they have is, you know, faster than light, which is around one third of the speed of light. Not talking about the entire lightning bolt of the uh, of the lightning. All right. So Glavinus is capable of taking on Rathalos, Rathian. These characters are capable of like hanging with Odegarn, even blitzing him at the start of the fight here. 
Odegaard literally can dodge light-based attacks here. He's able to fight against TTTT Yaku to a point where he just, like, you know, flexes back like, oh, you missed. Boop, gotcha. So, not only is he able to dodge a flash of light, these monsters are capable of blitzing him and hanging with him in a fight here. So, again, uh, excuse me, damn, my nose. Uh, sorry if you hear any sniffles. I'm not sick or anything. It's just my nose is just stuffy. So, yeah, the lion is just, um, yeah, not the guy you want to mess with. Now, let's go into his deviant. And we're not talking about Hellblade because, woof, oh, sweet lord, Hellblade would just be, um, yeah, Hellblade is overkill. Um, if Hellblade shows up in the verse, it's, uh, it's a done deal. Um, they're not beating a Hellblade at all. No dragon in that verse is beating Hellblade. He walks into that verse, boom, it's done. No, it, it, it's absolutely done for it. They get shredded. All right, absolutely shredded. So yeah, um, as to the Glavinus, uh, they have a much harder time with it, considering um, his blade, you know, is more or less acid based. He can use this for acidic purposes, and his, hand, you know, oh excuse me, his um hand to hand combat, or you know, his pretty much his melee combat is just much faster here, considering it's consistently contending with the likes of Odegar in the Rotten Veil vale here. So yeah, this will make him a lot more. I wouldn't say more powerful than his usual card apart, but I would definitely say he's faster. Excuse me while I take this um this sip real quick. Ooh, that Pepsi good. Pepsi really be hitting. But yeah, um, honestly, yeah, they're not messing with a acid Glavinus or any type of Glavinus. As a matter of fact, here. Glavinus really wouldn't shake up the verse here, but he'd definitely be a, you know, a monster, a wyvern that they would definitely not mess with anytime soon here. So, yeah, now we go into probably one of the more mild ones here. Glavinus can definitely shake up the verse. Gameth really, I could say she doesn't have a too much of a solid impact unless she gets captured or one of her babies gets captured and she has to come after them. And Gamut, I don't know, I, I really feel like if she was written in the verse here, she would definitely be, um, be capable of, like, walking across terrain, but actually, like, once she moves, she solidifies the water into ice to where it can hold her weight and she can, like, run across it easily. This means she can go pretty much anywhere casually. As for Glavinus, um, I like, I don't really like the burrowing thing where he just, like, digs and just goes into another area and just appears but again very possible that's how they really could just impact the verse here gameth is really not someone who's gonna be messed with i definitely see her into like a snowy biome with snow race and everything and she's pretty much the um dominant life form in the region this is the same thing with the likes of diablos who's not a you know a carnivore but is the apex life form uh, in that region, okay? Diablos is the top dog in uh, desert regions, despite the fact it ha does have to compete with um, San Barrios and all that, but you guys get it, right? It's the top herbivore, top life form in that region, the toughest life form in that region. And the fact is here, Gameth is pretty top of her game here. You know, Gameth is actually capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe and actually has more Ws over Tigerexes. It's actually confirmed in her lore that she flattens Tigerexes once they're fully grown. I'm sorry, once a Gameth is fully grown, whether it's male or female, they flatten a Tigerex. Like, Tigerex can't get through their hide, they can't really beat them, and then Gameth just obliterates them. So, honestly, uh, yeah, it's really just... Really not fair. I can say the same thing about Baryoth. You, you know, she's constantly contending with the likes of Tigerex and Baryoth on the regular. Um, again, the dragons cannot mess with her. Snow Race would not mess with her. Her basic diet would be, you know, plant material and maybe some ice, you know? So, honestly, uh, yeah, this is a creature they would just study at a distance, and if they got too close, it would be a problem. There's also the fact that, you know, the dragon hunters could see Gameth as a potential prize and try to capture one of her babies. And then once that happens, well, um, you're, uh, you're gonna put six feet under. Under snow, under dirt, under the worms themselves. So, uh, yeah, Gameth really doesn't shake up the verse unless she's bothered. 
all right so there's glavinus who's like a medium threat then there's glad Gla sorry uh gameth <laughs> sorry then there's gameth who's like a um again not too high and not too low she's like a a sub level threat you know she's really not too much of a threat to diverse now we get into Metsuzune. Now, Mizune is only aggressive, or, you know, male Mizunes are only aggressive when it's during breeding season. This could be a problem if, you know, they get a female Mitsuzune on Burke, and then there are other dragons around. Mitsuzune usually preys on fish here, but it's actually stated in its lore that it could also hunt and eat other dra- other, um, you know, occasionally other dragons. I wouldn't put it past it here because, you know, Zen Ogre was considered to prey on only Gargoyles. And then we find out this dude is hunting Durambaros. Freaking Durambaros! The, the dude who could smash boulders in the heads of Narcacujas like they're eggs. Yeah, so I wouldn't put it past any wyvern that they don't hunt, you know, above their standard food here. Now, considering Mitsuzune is capable of going in water like any Leviathan, right... Um, I could definitely see her hunting, uh, you know, Sea Shockers, Scaldrons, Flight Mares, and if they can roam in packs, they can take down Thunder Drums like they're the, they will basically be the killer whales. I mean, they are smarter than the dragons here. <laughs> all right, they, um, they do have above average intelligence, all right? So, yeah, I could definitely see Metsuzune's working in packs here. Um, even hunting Speed Stingers. I think Speed Stingers being hunted by something would be incredible. Considering the fact that they run across water and then they just get snatched by a Metsuzune. And then you see a bunch of them just get taken out. It would be just absolutely ridiculous. So, Metsuzune wouldn't be a problem unless the Dragon Riders are just interfering with its natural... Um, you know, it's a natural phenomenon. You know, if they go and they're about to be hunted here, I definitely can see, um, you know, the Dragon Riders proving to be a huge, you know, um, burden in Metsuzune's hunting path. And then, you know, Metsuzune goes ham, takes them down, takes them out. Because, again, these dragons don't have anything on them. I mean, Metsuzune is out here fighting the likes of Odagarin and, sorry, not Odagarin, uh, Zen Ogre and even Legiacris. All right, that makes it much more dangerous than it should be. It may look like a beautiful wyvern, and I actually think they they they'd be fine with it. Mitsuzune is not really a wyvern that um that attacks people, not really known for that. But during breeding season, the males are a bit aggressive here, so that might be the only reason here. So again, it's another mid-level threat or sub-level threat. Okay, Mitsuzune really wouldn't be attacking people. I I, I mean, it's a pretty calm, mild and peaceful um peaceful leviathan but again if you want to walk up on it like Zenogre did um prepare for the smoke yeah <laughs> sorry about that voice crack <laughs> i'm sorry about that voice crack <laughs> but uh yeah um if you were really gonna walk up on this thing expect for the smoke i mean this thing gave Zenogre the hands um feet and bubbles so i really doubt that um anybody or anything wouldn't catch that fate here so, let's review before we get into the major problem of the Faded 4 here. Gameth is a mid, is a mid or sub-level threat. Glavinus can be a mid, is pretty much a mid-threat in general. And then you have Metsuzune, who is a, um, you know, a, uh, sub-level threat. Alright? Now, let's get into the real problem. Astalos. Yeah, we're in trouble. Oh, my lord, they are in trouble. Not only can Asolos fly, but he's faster than any other dragon, alright? He's faster than any dragon in that verse. And the fact that Astolos would literally be, like, he's psychotic. Like, you, do you have any animal that's just go rapid fire, literally hyper aggressive? Like, Astolos is out here beating the mess out of Rathalos's, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of Seregioses, and would probably even run up on a Devil Joe. Matter of fact, he really would, because he's got the same insanity as Yin Garju, who pretty much, you, you know, fought Devil Joe and won. Same could be applied to Aslos. It's just that insane. That crazy. That, um, that messed up in the head. And the thing is, Astalos will eat anything. Humans, dragons, doesn't even matter. 
All right, Asolos goes in that verse here. His pincer tail is doing a lot of damage here. He'll take any opportunity he gets to get a meal here. And honestly, this is the biggest problem for the verse as a whole. He really, he, he could wreck it. He, he, even, you know, title class dragons um, included here, he pretty much wrecks house. Even if it's something like the Bewilderbeast or, you know, the Great Death. I do believe he would haunt it. And it's in his power level to... Oh, sorry, not power level. I sound like a Dragon Ball. But um, it's in his tier to do so. These monsters range can go from mountain level to continental. Literally no problem. These monsters can fight off a Devil Joe who is an Elder Dragon level um threat. Not on the same playing field, but he's a threat to them. All right, he can contend with Elder Dragons. All right, this makes him like at least a continental or a multi-continental threat. These monsters can contend and even fight back against him. All right, Th that's that's what just makes it all the more, all the more ridiculous here. You have Elder Dragons that can destroy islands like they're nothing. You, you know, um, even though you could say Leviant is just far above the tier here, you have Dire Mirage that can cause whole extinction events. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous how powerful um, these Elder Dragons are, and they're above basic Wyverns, because Elder Dragons can be considered planetary, if not, and I've shown in the, you know, how strong are Elder Dragons video, a lot higher. Now, with the likes of... Um, you know, Asolos, he's haunting everything on sight. Doesn't matter if it's a Titan Wing or a Screaming Death. That's how... The, you, you guys get it? That It does not matter to this dude. He's going to eat it. He's going to go after it, go out of his way, and hunt it. Like, let's say that he's, he's hunting in an abandoned city. And you see that one little guy just walking around minding his own business. He's going to go out of his way to take out and probably eat that guy. I mean, this dude had a bunch of um, Vespoids dead on the ground. A Velociprey walks into view. And what does he do? He goes out and kills the Velociprey, despite the fact that he was already eating Vespoids. And then he proceeds to eat the Velociprey. It's like, dude, what the... Oh, no, there's nothing stopping this dude. It is very possible that he'll hunt a death song like and be like Uno Reverse on what that song actually does here, good buddy. I'm actually hunting you based on the fact that you made a sound. This will this will probably make dragons have to adapt or possibly dragons that aren't pack, you know, pack related dragons here will have to find, you know, that pretty much being in a pack gives them a higher chance of survival. You know, you, you'll see things like triple strikes more often. Uh, thunder drums. I, I'll even say buffalo lords would probably not be as extinct anymore and start, you know, reproducing a lot more to keep the species intact. <laughs> All right? You, you just have dragons that you normally wouldn't see, you know, going together, forming symbiotic relationships. Astalos is shaking up that verse and pretty much owning it. All right? Out of all the Faded Four, yes, I could have just said, okay, um, the rest of them really don't matter because it's, you know, Astalos. But again, I feel like if I had to put Astalos as the main crux of this video, I have to say here that, um, yeah, I, I gotta put the rest of the Faded Four because they need some love as well here. They, they can be in a verse. They can impact in their own little way here. But Astalos, oh no, it's over. It, it's absolutely over. I doubt the Dragon Riders will have anything for this guy. They could probably seal it in a cave, but it's going to bust out. They'll probably have to use something like, oh, um, we're going to have to lure it to a location where um, it can just hunt relentlessly. And the best... Best I can probably give it is somewhere like Vanaheim or... It, Burke is going to have to cut some relations off with some of the other villages that um have dragons. <clears throat> Sorry. They're going to have to cut ties with some of the other, um you know, islands and nations and stuff that have dragons. Because Aslos is going to be that big of a problem. It's very possible that they're going to have to, you know, pretty much make a super defense here and probably go to the video game standards. Hiccup's going to have to tame dragons he normally thought he wouldn't tame. You know, um, Bewilderbeast, uh, Green Death, 
the Forever Wings. You, you know, he's going to have to bring them back to Burke and even try to tame the Screaming Death here to make sure Burke is the most fortified dragon fortress on, on the planet. I mean, sure, nobody would mess with Burke here, but this means that Astalos is a huge problem. Now, let's say we have Astalos as a species in the verse. This means that we have a wyvern that's going to constantly hunt dragons that eats nothing but dragons and people. D just whatever it wants, all right? This means Astalos is a huge, huge problem for the verse. Like, no, it, it, there's no stopping it. Like, if Astalos as a species in the verse, and I'm not even talking about the main Astalos we have here. And cause, you know what? Monster Hunter is a species in general. They do have species out here. But the fa and the fact is, it's just... It, 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 they can't stop him. And if he, he's in his deviant form, woo! They, um... I hope, uh, I hope they live a good life. I hope they, you know, got their affairs in order. I hope that everyone had a wonderful life on that planet. In that verse in general. Because Astalos is going to bend it over and own it. All right. He's going to pack it. He's going to smoke it. All right. He's going to turn the entire verse into a pack and smoke it, you guys. That's what he's going to do here. All right. There is no stopping Astalos. He, he really is just... The insanity, the constant um bloodlust of him, absolutely um just just messed up, man. It, it's you, you can't stop it. All right, Astalos is just way too big of a threat. He doesn't even need to be a. He's not even a mid tier level um threat here. Now you guys could say I'm downplaying the other um. Ugh, excuse me. Uh, Don playing the other members of the Faded Four here. But here's the thing here. Some of them are mild-mannered, and some of them like to be left alone. But, um, you know, the likes of, uh, Astalos goes out of his way to, um, to, a bit, to attack people. Like, he literally had a Rathalos far away from him, minding his own business. And he was like, oh, you're breathing. Yeah, that's a problem, okay? that That's just what Astalos is. You breathe, it's a whole problem. That's just, that, that's just the thing. Astalos is Black Air Force energy. All of it. He does not care. It, it, it's absolutely ridiculous that these guys, you know, you can, these guys have their own rankings, all right? These guys have their own thing here. And they definitely, you know, walk into the verse here, you know, strutting, stunting, all that good stuff here. These guys are, excuse me, these guys are, you know, in their own tier, in their own category, in their own everything. All right, you guys, there's just, there's nothing that can stop them or hurt them in the verse here. And they will live peaceful lives. Gameth would be able to, you know, um, overpopulate. Mitsuzune would be able to overpopulate and even go probably into pack hunting eventually. Glavinus would definitely overpopulate and, you know, conquer any region he desires. And Astalos, yeah, everybody's on the food chain. But yeah, you guys here, I think that's, um, I think that's good enough for this video here. But hey, um... Yeah, I hope you guys watch to the end and you see the next monster I'm going to be doing for How to Train Your Dragon. Peace.